ring cracks or is broken in the other way. You need a pair of scissors, some tape, a ring, the rod. In this case I've used just a piece of a broken rod that I have left over. And some string. In this case I used a little piece of uh, multi-braided fishing line. Okay, we start finding the end of this tape. This I cut a little piece off. This piece of tape should not be wider than the foot of the ring is long. Not much at least. Something like this. Um, Because we want our wrapping to be as short as possible. Uh, wrapping will uh, stiffen up the rod uh, as well as uh, it will make break point if it's too big. And the rod, you risk breaking the rod uh, right next to the ring. In almost all cases when a rod breaks, it's right next to the ring, one of the rings, of course. Or just above where two pieces of rod are joined. And that's because either the joint where two pieces are put together or a ring the rod is a little bit stiffer there and then it automatically breaks on the weakest side. Okay, I try to aim my ring in line with the rest of the rings on the rod. Um, of course, uh, normally you would pick a ring that fits the tapering of the rod. In this case we haven't taken notice of that, so I have a, a ring that's a little mall placed. But you get the point. I have a small piece of string here that I have tied and made a loop. This piece you should make before you start wrapping. And I will show you why. Okay, I only used about a meter here, so I hope it's long enough. Um, if I was to uh, make a really nice uh, wrapping, then I would have sanded or filed down the tip of the foot of the ring. To uh, make the tapering go as seamless as possible into the rut, but uh, I haven't done that here. Um, this is, as I said, the quick and dirty way. Um, I start wrapping the thread over itself to lock that piece here. Now this is fishing line, so it's extremely slippery. try to make my wrapping as even as possible. Let it a little bit. And I try to tighten it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. 
bit slips and shows I haven't wrapped many enough times around. You can of course try to lock the thread down with the tape but uh, in most cases it doesn't do much. various tools to do this but this way I'm showing here is a quick and dirty way for someone who is only going to fix his own rod and not going to build multiple fishing rods. And then of course you don't need to have all the fancy and expensive tools to do this. Okay, now here's why it's handy to have this loop made in advance. Because we want there to be no end at all to the string. No knot. We want it to be as even and as nice as possible. And what I'm doing here is wrapping the line around this loop I'm going to thread the end of the string through the loop here and pull it through. Then you'll get the ends, both ends of the string, locked under the thread. always try to push threads together so well, the rattle gets more even. Now, thread the string through the Loop. Pull the, the string through. Hmm. Yeah, it can be quite mm. difficult to pull this through and get it to. go through like you want. <coughs> but in this case it went quite well. Now one thing I forgot to mention. This will hold for a while easy, quick and dirty way to save your fishing trip if you're out fishing, but this will not hold in the long run. So what you want to do when you come home from your fishing trip is lacquer this. So 
get a hold of some epoxy I'd use regular regular clear epoxy two component and uh, smear that on either that or you can do the really quick and dirty way a little bit of nail polish that will hold the wrappings in place and uh, protect the wrappings from scratches and getting ripped up when you put the rod down and that's how simple it is